Sup guys, Haking here, bringing you a preview discussion video regarding some news that's just come out uh, regarding Resident Evil 4 Remake. Oh, what a time to be a Resident Evil fan. So much news coming out and everything. Uh, so yeah, as we, as we all know, uh, Resident Evil 4 Remake is, is coming. If you guys saw the leaked, um, what do you call it, the leaked production schedule that was that 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 got leaked I, keep, I hate saying that word constantly we know that Resident Evil 4 remake is in development uh, and it, it should be coming out after we get Resident Evil Outrage which apparently is going to be Revelations 3 but uh, forget Revelations 3 for now um, this is about Resident Evil 4 remake and well I'm, I've got the article up here I read this the other day actually I mean, I've been trying to get my thoughts together in terms of how to talk about this because I've got a lot to say on the matter when it comes to Resident Evil 4 uh, but yeah so apparently Resident Evil 4 remake reportedly getting partial development reboot due to internal disagreements so let's read through this article talk about this so and then talk about it so the much rumored remake of Resident Evil 4 is reportedly seeing a partial reboot at Capcom and a change in development leadership after disagreements over its direction VGC reports that pre-sources close to the project, core Resident Evil studio Capcom Division 1 has taken the lead on the project with original developer M2 seeing its role, its role reduced. The changes could apparently lead to a 2023 release date. The report explains that following a project review, M2 was seen to be too faithful to the original game, with Capcom preferring that the remake takes inspiration from Resident Evil 4 but introduces new elements and features. The latter approach was taken in both the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes with varying degree levels of fan response. M2 is said to have wanted to stick to the Resi 4 formula due to backlash against Resident Evil 3's changes, which saw portions of the original game entirely removed. The Resident Evil 4 remake has been rumoured for some time, with this year's huge leaks of apparent internal Capcom documents pointing to a quarter 4 2022 release date. It feels like a likely prospect, not not least after the new Resident Evil 3 included a specific reference to the sequel. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I'm going to read. The rest is just uh, Mikami's uh, boat, I think. That if it turns out good, he has no issues with it. Blah, blah, blah. No one cares. No one cares about Shinji Mikami and what he thinks, since he's the one who caused this entire problem with the franchise to begin with. But that's for another time. Resident Evil 4. So, apparently... The studio that was making the game is going to have its role reduced and the studio that was making it is the same studio that uh, worked on Resident Evil 3 Remake. And we all know how that turned out. Uh, it was pretty much a 50-50 game really. Yeah, there were good parts to it, good elements to it, but overall it was a huge fat disappointment when you compared it to uh, the Resident Evil 2 Remake. Now, Resident Evil 2 Remake, I, I had fun with it, but overall I was disappointed with that game. Like, massively disappointed in, in, in terms of how they handled the B scenarios and how they pretty much cut, cut features that were present in the PS1 game. I mean, for Christ's sake, I know I know people are going to hate, and, I, I, and it's really annoying that people do this. And I always say this, how can a game that was made 20 years ago have more elements to it, more features than the freaking... Uh, you know, PS4 slash Xbox uh, One version, whatever that that came out like later with with, with advanced graphics and uh, updates and, and technology and shit. Like, how how do you get away with that? But no, that's what we got. And Resident Evil 2 Remake is a fine. It's an overall fine game. I think it's a technical masterpiece. I, I think I've said that like before. Like when it comes to technical aspects and gameplay, it's freaking great and the atmosphere is great. But there were a lot of problems with that game. And I remember when I first played it, and I thought to myself. If, if this is what they did with that, God, God knows what the changes for the Resident Evil 3 remake would be. And I was completely right. When that game came out, it was pretty much it was pretty much butchered. There were there were there were good aspects to it, but overall that was not not what I wanted in a remake. You know, I I look at Resident Evil 1 remake, right? I look at the original remake for Resident Evil 1, and that's pretty much perfection, despite one little flaw, which is which is pretty much the ending and not not being able to make the game in a way where 
you could have all the endings be canon basically like why didn't they just have Jill and Barry together in a cell in Chris's campaign and uh, uh, Chris and Rebecca together in a cell in Jill's campaign and boom there you go you could have had the all four of them getting away, do you know what I mean? Instead of, oh, both, both, both scenarios are canon, it's just like, you know, you gotta sort of merge it together, it's just ridiculous. And, yeah, yeah, Resident Evil 3 remake, like, they, they cut too much, man, they cut, they, they, they pretty much cut the entire Raccoon City area down and replaced it with new, new areas, which were meh, really. Uh, where was the restaurant? Where was the newspaper station? Where was the sales office? Where was the entire clock tower section, huh? Where was the graveyard and the park? You know what I'm saying? Like, they changed way too much, and yeah, I just, I wasn't a fan of that. I really, really wasn't a fan of that. It was very disappointing, especially for the price that a lot of people paid for it. Like, don't give me that uh, crappy excuse that, oh, it had Resistance on it. I never played Resistance. I don't play multiplayer games, okay? I haven't played them since I got a PS4, so... I'm not a fan of that, and that really, really annoyed me, and it's like, why? Why? But yeah, the company making that game were basically working on the remake for Resident Evil 4, and apparently they wanted to stick faithful to it after how badly they screwed up with the third one, and how badly the backlash and the reception was by fans, and it makes sense, you know, you get that kind of fan backlash, it's like, okay guys, we clearly screwed up, so let's... Let's do it right this time, and um, from our reading here, it seems they were sticking way too close to it, considering how different uh, the, the, the remakes for 2 and 3 were in general. I mean, I want to be honest with you guys, um, I'm not a big fan of Resident Evil 4's narrative, okay? As a game, I think it's great. I think it's, it's probably one of the best Resident Evil games ever made. But as a game, okay, and I'm talking about the gameplay, like, from a gameplay perspective, it's great. But as a Resident Evil game, as a Resident Resident Evil game, and when I, when I mean Resident Evil, I mean in terms of being a game that sort of connects to, to the story and sort of continues the story, it's a flop. Okay, the actual narrative in that game is shite. So, it's, it's set six years after, Umbrella is finished. What? Uh, Leon is now a US agent, okay, um... What happened to Sherry? Oh, we don't know. Okay. Uh, he gets sent by himself to save the president's door. Are you kidding me? Um, he, 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 he somehow knows that Ada is alive and working for Wesker. Okay, you, you'd, you'd expect the, the reunion would be more emotional and uplifting. Nope, nothing like that. Okay. Uh, Krauser? Who the hell is Krauser? This dude just randomly shows up and appears out of nowhere and it's like, Long time no see, comrade. It's like, oh, who are you? Do, do I remember you? Oh no, I don't know you. You're a new character. Why am I supposed to give a shit? Do you know what I mean? Why am I supposed to give a shit? Lost Plagas? What? There's a parasite? Um, we already had a parasite. It was called a nemesis. Why not tie that in with the Lost Plagas? Which, funny enough, is something that the Resident Evil 3 remake did. They, they sort of hinted at the Nemesis Parasite maybe being linked, and I think it was pretty much confirmed in the official database for the for the game that it is linked to the Lost Plagas Parasite, like like the Nemesis Parasite was supposed to be Umbrella's version of the Lost Plagas Parasite, so there is a connective little tissue there, which was great, I thought. But yeah, you've got all these random things happening, you've got all these random characters, a little midget in a pirate hat, uh, Sadler, who the hell is Sadler? He just shows up and he turned this entire village into a cult weather, like what? Um, Oh, we're gonna send. We're gonna infect Ashley, and then we're gonna send her to her dad to infect uh, the rest of uh, the presidency over there. Okay, cool, evil plan. So, why not just send her away? Oh, we need we we need her to, we need her as hostage so we can get money. Just send her back, like you. You had her infected, and then you go around saying, "Oh, by the way, we injected you. You got parasites in you." Well, shit. Well, we can't take you back, you know, in case you you know end up infecting everyone else. There goes your plan, genius. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of all the little parts in the game where they try to kill Ashley. It's like, we need her alive. Nope, let's just trap her and then kill her. Do you get what I'm saying, guys? Do you get what I'm saying? There's little, there's moments like that, and it's like, it's ridiculous. There's a lot of plot holes in this game, and I'm not a fan of it. So, so we have Capcom here pretty much saying, no, they want new features. They want new story elements uh, to be introduced in the, in the remake. And it's like, okay, I'm all for that. If... If it's done in a way that makes RE4 remake tie in more with the past games, then I'm all for it. For example, um, what would I change? But personally, I think the game is way too long than it needs to be. I am not a big fan of the castle area in that game. There's some good moments, yeah, but overall, it drags. It drags that entire section. 
and then we get to the island and it drags even further and it's like how did you do such a good job with the entire village section and then you drop the ball so hard with the castle and island sections like what were the best parts in the castle um the, the the tunnel area when you're getting chased by salazar's right hand that was terrifying um the minecart air sequence that was great uh, uh the invisible uh insects in the sewers that was cool a few traps here and there uh the ashley segment where you're just going around and you're having to solve this bloody puzzle and you're getting chased by knights whatever like parrots like the lost parkers and the knight armor that was cool um yeah, those, those parts were memorable, but everything else just dragged in that entire section. And then with the island part, I remember it. Uh, the Krauser battle, uh, the part when you're on the truck and you're shooting off all the enemies while Ashley's driving, and the helicopter sequence. I think those are the, those are the only memorable parts. And the regeneration regenerate, regenerators in the in the medical part, like that that was cool. But yeah, like there's those are like just minor set pieces filled in between with all of these dragged on unnecessary parts in order to drag the game on and it's like I remember playing it the first time and I kept thinking when is this game gonna end I was 14 years old and I'm complaining when the game's gonna end like I was I've been playing for like 10 hours and I'm like when's this game gonna end like Jesus Christ it just kept on going and going and I really got tired of it <sighs> so yeah my overall experience of RE4 while good and enjoyable because it is a game I've gone back and replayed many times when I when I when I when I compare it to what's come next and what's come before it's like such a dud like I compare it to Resident Evil 7 and I find Resident Evil 7 to be a breath of fresh air and, and more consistent with what they were trying to do than what Resident Evil 4 did Resident Evil 4 caused for me just caused a, a lot of unnecessary problems like it doesn't even feel like a main game it feels like a spin-off like Resident Resident Evil Cold Veronica, in my opinion, is the true RE4 because that game does a lot more to set things up and then RE4 comes out and just takes a giant shit on it because, you know, Shinji Mikami just wanted to reboot the series because screw, screw sticking to the canon, screw sticking to following all the set up plots and storylines, no, forget that, let's, let's reboot the series and, and skip all of that and just do a big massive time job. It's like, why? Why? And it caused so many problems in the timeline. You had to have so many pointless games in order to explain all the extra bullshit that happened. Like, like Umbrella Chronicles and Dark Side Chronicles were direct results of what RE4 did and what we didn't get before. Like, like, like I said, I'm not a fan of, of, of how they did that. I'm not a fan of the narrative. And I'm like, personally, like, if I was making the game... What changes would I do? Uh, let's see. I wouldn't send Leon in by himself. For starters, if you're going to have someone like Krauser show up, have him there from the start, for Christ's sake. So send him and Leon together as partners. Have the game start with them going in and, and, and splitting up and meeting up from time to time and radio calling. And then you get the big twist halfway through where it's revealed... Krauser is the traitor. Holy shit. Boom. You get backstabbed and you get betrayed and Krauser's actually working for, for Sadler and the bad guys. Change number one. Change number two. Ashley, for Christ's sake, have her be able to carry a weapon or something. Make her like, e either make her like Moira, okay? Like, make her like Moira. Like, give give her a knife or, or, or a, cr or a cr uh, what do you call it? Uh, a crane? No, what do you call it? A freaking, a club? Or, 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 or an iron pipe or something like uh, like or uh, yeah, something like that just give her something so she's able to defend herself so she so she's not a typical damsel in distress that's gonna be crying out Leon help me Leon help me help me for the hundredth bloody goddamn time like I do not want to go through that experience again like give her something to make her useful or like have Leon train her to use her goddamn gun and maybe as the game progresses in the like when she gets to the island she's able to use a handgun or something to sort of defend herself like do 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 something like make make her make it so that when we play her we don't feel like it's a goddamn chore do you understand like make, make her vital in terms of making the gameplay fun because the segments where you're escorting her are not fun it's not fun it's a it's bloody annoying two three change number three 
keep the verge pretty much the same. Maybe extend it a bit, but keep it the same. Because uh, overall, that is the best part of the original game, hands down. Like there, there isn't really a thing I would change in that. It's the best part of the of the entire original game. So keep that the bloody same for Christ's sake, and maybe just expand on it. Change number four. The castle and and all of that crap to do with it. Honestly, I would suggest cutting out Salazar. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Like, like replace Salazar with 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 Spencer. Replace Salazar with Spencer. Maybe tie it, and that way you can tie it to Resident Evil Five in a way. Maybe it's one of maybe make the castle a Spencer Estate castle or something, and have it and and sort of tie that in with Resident Evil Five Lost in Nightmares later on. Like maybe Leon encounters Spencer there and he's helping Sadler or something, or Sadler's helping him actually. And like, you know, make make that would be change number five. Make it makes Sadler connected to Umbrella. Don't make him this random dude just shows up out of no one is like, yes, I want to infect America because religion is called. Like, no, like, what the hell? What was that? Like, it's fine, but if you're not gonna develop it and explain it, what is the bloody point? Like, like, do something with that. Like, explain. Get, Go into his character a bit, so so make him an, an umbrella scientist, make it that he's working with Spencer, or if you're gonna keep Salazar anyway, connect Salazar or the Salazar family to the Spencer family, make them the distant cousins or something, have have a connective tissue there or something, like maybe maybe, maybe, maybe Spencer grew up there or Salazar is, is, is a friend of Spencer's or that, or, 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 he's, or he's Spencer's protege, I mean the dude's like 20 years old, right, maybe he, he, he lived with the Spencer family at one point and he's familiar with Umbrella and all that crap, and he and he's and he's fine, and he was one of the financiers for the Umbrella Corporation, and now and now and now Sadler's been sent by Spencer to sort of continue experiments on Las Plagas, and now Salazar's financing him while Sadler's using the whole Lucy Nominados bullshit to sort of convert him, and that I don't know, make make something there connected to Umbrella and the past games, make it so it doesn't just feel so uneven and random and out of nowhere. Do you know what I mean, like? Do something with it, for Christ's sake. Uh, change number six. Ugh, change number six. What would I do for number six? Ugh. I don't know. Have have Krauser be like I said. Have Krauser be a more bigger presence. Okay. Okay. He's he's Leon's friend. You think he's a cool guy? Then he stabs you in the back, and it's revealed he's actually the one who kidnapped Ashley. And is working with Ada and, and Wesker in secret while working with Sadler in order to steal Lost Plagas. Have him maybe kill Sadler. Like after you, you have a boss fight with Sadler, Krauser comes in, he kills him, he takes the sample, he's about to escape with it, and then Leon and Ada uh, team up to fight him, and he's the final boss. Like just make it some sort of cool, I don't know, knife. Uh, combat hand to hand, just make the boss fight better and more personal, basically. Because like, like I didn't feel anything for Kraus. I mean, after I played Dark Side Chronicles, obviously I felt the connection a bit more there. But RE4 just it just lacks a lot of character depth there. Like it's just a bunch of shit woven together to to just make the game go forward. Do you know what I mean? Like I want I want more depth there, and it's not there in the original game. So have something there. So like, in my opinion, just have Krauser sort of be like the final win, really. A lot of people might not like it, but like, again, this is a remake, guys. It's a reimagining. So try and it, it, sit down and think for one second, how would you imagine this game? How would you raise the stakes? And that's kind of a cool way to do it. Unless you want, I don't know, in some weird twist, maybe you can have Wesker show up at the end, and he kills Sadler, and, and 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 you fight him at the end, like, and he takes the sample, and he knows Ada wants to be is planning to betray, him, so he kicks her ass. Late Leon saves her, and that would be the first time we ever have Leon and Wesker square off, and that would kind of be like sort of a setup for Resident Evil Five, like maybe you know Leon get, sends something to Chris at the end, whatever, and he's like, yeah, I I I fought Wesker, whatever, and I escaped with barely my life inch by inches or something i don't know like do something surprising for christ's sake like don't just do the same thing over and over like um change number seven change number seven ada's organization okay like in resident evil 2 she was working for the agency and then in resident evil 4 she suddenly left the agency and now she's working for this organization which is supposed to be a chinese organization or something and then in resident evil 6 you find out that she needs to work for simmons and the family and then she left the family 
and Simmons and Service after he nuked Raccoon City. So that makes me think the agency in Ori 2 was the family. I don't know if that was supposed to be the hint or whatever. I don't know. Like, there's, there's too much inconsistency and bullshit that's never really answered in, in, the, in the series. But, like, I don't know. Just give us some information here because... It, because, like, you, they sort of ret retconned it. Like, Ada was a mercenary in an RE2 remake. So, with RE4, especially if she's working with Wesker, like, uh, give us more. Give us more. Like, explain what the organization is. And since Wesker is, I don't know, is he working for the organization at the time? And he plans to betray them? And Ada is aware. Like, what's going on there? Like, it's very confusing. Do you understand? Like, I, d I don't get all of that. Like, uh, Jesus. I'm trying to think what else, what else could they do? Um, I'm trying to think like what what else could they do to to expand or add more depth and story to the game? What what more could be answered? Um, I think that's really it. That's really all the all the elements I would like to see done. Those are the major changes I would like to see in, in a remake for Resident Evil 4. And God knows I've suggested all of this in the surveys that we've gotten from Capcom asking us what you want next or what you thought or what would you want us to do like and I've, I've pretty much written all of this stuff down for them like in, in so many surveys that we've gotten over all the releases of all the past games so it's like just do that do that and I, I'd probably be happy with it like you know if you do that then you, at least we get a title that feels a remake that feels better because like you hear the word remake and it's like it, it, you, you think of something like I don't know American Psycho and the remake of American Psycho instead of I, I don't know like what's a good like Dawn of the Dead like and you compare that to the remake and it's very different like maybe something like that but better like because like like I said I'm not a fan of RE4's original narrative I would prefer to be major changes in that that at least connect it to the past games more, so that when you're playing it, you get all the references, you're like, ah, oh, that's that, that's how it is. Hell, um, si since Nikolai at the end of the RE3 Re remake says he was working for someone else, maybe you could reveal that he was actually, in fact, working for for Salazar or, or, or Sadler, maybe, or perhaps he was working for Ada's organization or Wesker's organization or something, and that can be revealed. I don't know, like, do something cool with it, like, instead of the same crap over and over again. Oops, sorry about that. As for gameplay, what, just make it similar to Resident Evil 2 Remake, in my opinion. Uh, would I want a dodge button? Yeah, keep the keep the dodge mechanic, I think, from RE3 Remake. Maybe update it a bit, make it a bit more better. It, it was still a bit of... I hardly used it when playing it. That, because the game was basically short, so I don't know. And obviously, walking and shooting, keep that. Um... And I don't know attachments to your weapons. I'd like to see. I don't know. I'd love to see attachments done to the to, to the weapons. But ov overall, like yeah, just just expand certain areas and cut certain areas short. Oh, here's another change you could do. The 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 island facility. Uh, make that an umbrella secret facility or something. And like when you go for it, you you notice all the logos and the symbols, and you find out that this is where they were doing the a nemesis research or something, or like all the various other. And maybe you could tie it in with the with, with the past games, like you, you pass a room and it's got T-Virus research, another one is like G-Virus research or something after Hank got the sample back. Maybe another room is called Veronica research or, or something, technically Wesker got that, not Umbrella, so they wouldn't have that, would they? They wouldn't have that with them. So, do you know what I mean? Something like that, something like that, some st stuff like that. But obviously, but I want new enemies as well, because that's the thing you have to consider, like, they, they obviously update the enemies, like, like they updated the Gamma Hunters. Or how they turn the G embryo into like multiple enemies. I mean, what could they do here? Like, honestly, just keep it the same, really. Like, in terms of the enemies, like, the variety. Uh, I don't know, really. I mean, that's that's really it. That's all I can really think of. Like, where most of my problems really steam from, from, from the narrative. Like, that's my biggest problem with RE4. Oh, add more puzzles. For the love of God, add more puzzles into the game and make them difficult and thought, thought thinking. Like, like Jesus, like RE3 has some of the most hard hardest puzzles in the series in the original games. And then you play the remake and there's only like two? There was only two puzzles in RE3 remake, weren't there? The train puzzle and, and the and the serum puzzle, that's it. Like what the hell? Like seriously, what the hell? Like add more puzzles in there for Christ's sake. But but yeah, that's I think that's my overall thoughts for the game, like what they should do. 
and apparently it's going to come out in 23. If you if you read the leaked schedule thing, it said 22. Like the game was originally scheduled to come out at, in late 22. So we were going to get RE8 in in originally in April, and now it's coming out in May. And then we were supposed to get uh, Revelations 3 at the end of 2021. And keep in mind, guys, you're probably wondering why hasn't this game been announced then if it's supposed to be coming out next after RE8. The game apparently is going to be a Nintendo exclusive first before being ported over to uh, uh, next con uh, to, the, to the consoles, basically, to the other consoles later on, I think the year after. So if they're going to reveal Revelations 3, it would be at a, a Nintendo event. So think of what the next Nintendo event is, and maybe that's when we're going to get the game announced. So that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking E3. I'm thinking E3. Like I think in June or July, I think they'll they'll announce the game for a for a Christmas release on the Nintendo Switch, and then obviously RE4 remake would come out in um uh, in late 23. I'm assuming. I'm assuming they're gonna do the same formula that they usually do for all the Resident Evil games, which is basically well, E3 this year. E3 this year will have Revelations 3 revealed. And it depends how far in development RE4 remake is as well. So maybe we'll get a trailer. But you know how you know how they you know how Capcom is with with showing a trailer for their game, and then it comes out straight away a few months after in that yeah, the next year or something. So I'm thinking I'm thinking Revelations 2 in 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 a reveal in E3 21, and then an early release date in 22. And then an uh, E3 reveal of RE4 remake in 22 E3 for a early uh, or mid or perhaps late again depending on where how far development is for uh, a 23 release. And then after that it's RE4, uh, sorry RE9 Apocalypse apparently, which would be which would be 2024 then because if they're going to release RE4 remake in 23. And again, it depends on where the development is for that game. It could it could come out early or it could come out late. I'm thinking late because if if, if M2 is not long is no longer working on it and that their role is pretty much reduced, uh, it, it it reminds me of what they did with Final Fantasy VII remake, where you had uh, I think Cyber 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 something working on it, and then and then uh, Square Enix came in and they were like, nope, you're not doing it anymore. We don't like what you've done. So they they took they got rid of them and they started making them, the game themselves and obviously that's what we got and it was great. So maybe that's kind of what's happening here. Like uh, whatever they've made so far, they're just going to take and either scrap or they're going to keep elements of it and update it with what they want to see and what Capcom personally wants in the remake. But yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking perhaps a mid 23 release. Maybe again it, again it depends, it depends on how far development is and then RE9 for a 24 release. And then there's Ari Hank, which at this point I know for a fact hasn't hasn't started development. Okay, sorry about that interruption. What was I on about? Yeah, so yeah, uh, Ari Ari Apocalypse. I think for a because did that that was listed for a 23 release. I think wasn't it like a, a late 23 release? But I think that's gonna go to Ari for remake, and Ari Nine will be a 24 release. And then there's the Ari Hank game, which as I was saying. Is I've not heard that that's in development. Okay, I think that's just something they've propositioned, but I don't know if that's going to officially go into development. That might not go into development because the rumors are, from what I've heard, is that RE9 is going to be the last numbered Resident Evil game, and then after that, it's going to be a bunch of uh, subtitled Resident Evil games uh, slash reboot, basically. Not not a reboot like Devil May Cry that we got. God heavens, no. More like. More like um, they'll try and complete a lot of the individual character storylines by the time we get to RE9, or that will complete some character storylines. And then once that once that's over, they're just going to continue with the new characters that they got, or they're going to give us new characters. But it's going to take place. It's going to be sequels set after RE9, but with new characters and new storylines and that. So whatever they're doing, they want to try and wrap up. So like. Like like RE Village apparently is going to be Chris's last game. Apparently, I don't know. Um, Revelations 3 is going to have Rebecca Chambers in it again. I would love that, by the way, because if they're going for the whole coloured theme thing, if you guys, I don't know if you guys ever realised, but uh, uh, Resident Evil 1, for, uh, Resident Evil Revelations 1 had, had Jill, whose colour theme is blue. 
and it takes place on a ship and it has a water-based virus so there you go that's that's one theme there and then the other color theme was red which you know when you think about the characters in red that's Claire and Barry and the whole theme of a fear virus and blood and guts and gore and that was Revelations 2 obviously so logically speaking if they're sort of inspired by that idea then the next color would at least when you think about it, it would make sense to be green. In which case, we have three characters who are green themed, which are Chris, Carlos, and Rebecca. And apparently, Rebecca is supposed to be in Revelations 3. And my hope, my hope is, is that Revelations 3 is going to star Rebecca alongside Carlos, with him being part of the South American branch of the BSA, set in South America set in a jungle environment with a plant-based virus that can cause hallucinations and hopefully the gameplay involves you as Rebecca being able to create a whole mixture of herbs and antidotes and other agents to combat this new virus threat and Carlos will be there to aid you and help you and we can kind of see what he's been up to even though he's supposed to be like a character that's supposed to be done and done but like with with the recent with Resident Evil with the recent Resident Evil 3 remake, you know Carlos's popularity, I imagine, has sort of gone up a bit. So I would love to see his character return. That or they they so, somehow bring back Billy and have it be with her and her with her, you know, Rebecca and Billy again. Um, personally, like I said, my mom is really annoying me now. Like <laughs> she went to give my oyster card. It's annoying. Ugh. Plus, it's night time, so she's going to sleep and saying good night. But anyway, uh, sorry about the interruptions. Jesus Christ, I need to. I, I wonder what's the time now? It's one twenty-four in the morning. Jesus, and I'm doing this. Hey, I enjoy doing this stuff, especially when I get in the mood and I want to start talking. But yeah, like I said about Revelations Three, I'm hoping it's with Rebecca. I'm hoping Carlos is in it with her again to do with the whole color color theme, and that it's 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 in a jungle environment with a plant based virus. That would be kind of cool. That would be unique and different. Uh, just having that sort of be like a main focus, and I would love it if Nikolai is the main villain, and you know we we have we have Carlos taking him out for once. That would be kind of a cool sort of tying with that, and that that would be all wrapped up because because to this day we don't know if Nikolai survived or not. Uh, e either he gets uh, I think I think the true ending of Ari Free is that he, he gets in the helicopter, what we don't know if, if Joe blows it up or if he escapes. Even though Resident Evil Survivor has a note written by him, but in the Japanese version it's by a, a, a UBSC commander, not Nikolai, so... I don't know what the hell goes on with the translations between English and Japanese. And in the recent, in the recent RE3 remake, we don't see him die. He gets shot, he's still alive, and if you look closely in the cutscene, there's a second helicopter on, on the on, in the area that they're in. So he could have easily gone in that one and flown out. So, yeah, like I said, I would love to see some sort of conclusion with that. And that, if Revelations 3 is structured like that, that would be cool. So, that will be the end of Rebecca and Carlos' story, really. And then Resident Evil 9. What could Resident Evil 9 be? Um, Resident Evil 9. Also, keep in mind, uh, uh, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness apparently has been confirmed to take place after RE4, which is really annoying because I was really hoping for it to be a sequel to Vendetta and sort of maybe get a conclusion with Leon there and, and Claire, but instead it takes place after RE4. So that means that sets the, the series in between RE4 and RE Degeneration. So I don't know what the hell's going on, on there because I thought the game was going to have a lot of focus with Leon maybe dealing with all the Illuminati bullshit after RE6 and sort of dealing with that in the White House. I don't know. That's what I was hoping for. But no, apparently that's the. It's it's a prequel series, so that's that's really annoying. But RE9. Uh, the only rumors I know from RE9 is apparently that two main characters are returning, but it's two main characters who have never been in the same game together. So I'm hoping it's Jill. Because she hasn't been in, in the series since RE5, okay? And the last time she was canonically mentioned was Revelations 2, where she wrote an email to Barry saying that she was still recovering after her after all the crap she went through in RE5. So I'm hoping that Jill comes back in RE9. And I am hoping they sort of give us a PTS thing with her and maybe we get flashbacks. In fact, a good a good way to a good way for a plot would be that Jill keeps having flashbacks or memories of, of her time working on the Wesker and maybe something happens where she realizes that there's there's someone that that she worked for in between Wesker and this new villain and she remembers this or or, or the or the threat or this new threat emerges and that triggers her past memories and it's like hold on a second this this is something that Wesker like Albert Wesker did a few years back when I was working under him 
and this sort of ties in. Maybe it's like a plan B or worst case in case he actually failed, you know, because that would be kind of cool to do. But then, of course, who would the secondary character be? Would it be Leon? Because we've had Chris in, in, in this new uh, trilogy or saga, if you will. So it would kind of make sense to bring Leon back. And that would be kind of cool. But personally, I'm kind of hoping it would be with Claire, maybe. Because I would love to see some girl power, you know, Claire and Jill together. But honestly, honestly, I would actually prefer Jake. I know what you guys are thinking. What the hell? Why would you want Jake back? Because, hear me out. Yeah, think about it. You have, you have the horror segments with Jill and she has a PTSD. And then you have Jake, who's more of the action character. And that would be kind of be a cool interaction. Because think about it. It's Jill helping or working with the son of the man who enslaved her and you can get a lot of character development between her and Jake in terms of that and maybe she doesn't trust him or doesn't and she sees how he's very different from his dad and she grows to care for him and Jake's sort of like you know she's Chris's partner and he learns a bit more about Chris from her after he sort of heated interaction with him in RE5 and obviously if you guys have read the extended files of RE6 you know that uh, Jake had a very close relationship with his mom and the whole reason he got pissed at Chris for killing Wesker is because he wouldn't be able to keep the promise he made to his mom which was to find his dad and talk to him and all that crap so that, that would kind of be kind of cool with Jill sort of being a seg surrogate mother for Jake and that so that, that's just my idea that's, I'm just throwing that there I, I wouldn't mind if they brought Jake back Despite Ori6's problems, there are a few things I did right, and I did enjoy Jake's character. So if, if it's him and Jill together sort of interacting, I wouldn't mind that. But if it's with Leon, or, or especially Claire, I wouldn't mind that either. But I'm just saying, that's just an idea to throw out there. But uh, God, I hope that doesn't get a copyright strike. Again, these are rumours, so I don't know if this is legit or not. Like, this is just my thoughts. But yeah, Ori4 Remake, because this, this is what this whole video was mainly about. Ori4 Remake. Will it be good? I don't know. Like, guys, like I said, guys, I was, I'm not a big fan of the reimaginings of RE2 and RE3. I'm not. Um, gameplay wise, atmosphere wise, uh, technical graphics wise, it's great. It's great. But I think, I think they're masterpieces in terms of how they designed and did all of that. But from, from, from feature wise, like in terms of the, how they kind of screwed up the, the A and B scenario storytelling, entwined storytelling in the remake for two, that was very disappointing. And the way they just cut a whole bunch of segments out of RE3 remake, that was very disappointing. So I don't know, I'm hoping RE4 remake takes everything, all the good stuff from those two games and combines it and then does something even better than what the original game did. That's what I'm hoping for. And I'm hoping that it turns out great. Uh, because overall, those games are fun, okay? If someone came up to me and said, oh, they were, I would say, yes, they are worth playing. They are fun games. But RE4 Original is also a fun game. And yet, I really hate the narrative in that. But it's a fun, damn good game. And that's the thing, like, like... And that's the thing, you need, to fight the, you need to find the balance. You need to find the right balance of, of good storytelling and good gameplay. And while the re or the reimaginings have the gameplay down in spades, the storytelling is a bit... Uh, and especially when it comes, like I said, I can only complain about the same stuff over and over again. But you guys get the point. Anyway, that's that. For now, really, I just want to... I can't wait for RE8 to come out. And I'm happy that it's on PS4. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to that. Like the next... The next, I'm on my week break at the moment, by the way, so this is just me taking a week off now, starting today, and just enjoying myself for the next nine days. And then it's a case of having to survive for another four months until RE8 comes out. Because really, the, 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 my games, movies, or anime, those are the kind of things that keep me going in life, okay? Like, I don't really have a lot in, in, in life that I enjoy, except for those things, and that's what keeps me going and keeps me sane for the most part otherwise i would have turned into a serial killer by now but no <laughs> i regress plus you know the whole uh, covid thing has not helped my mental sanity like especially with not being able to hang out with my friends and family so that's really screwed me up and really these games and all this news is what keeps me going that and my hobby of making youtube videos and having you guys react and in hopefully enjoying them that's all i can really uh, aspire to do at the moment but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video i'm sorry for the long ass discussion and the interruptions and i hope you enjoyed my thoughts and uh, yeah i'm curious what you guys think overall as always like and subscribe whatever and i shall see you when i shall see you take care and bye